a lot of us wants to reach the millionaire status, to reach financial freedom or abundance. We see the lives of millionaires and billionaires in social media, wishing our lives to reach the same level as them. But have you ever thought about how they started in the first place? How they achieved such remarkable feats? We often exclude this and just focus on the finished product itself. What did they sacrifice in order to achieve that life? Are you doing something wrong? Well, in today's video, I will share to you 7 habits you do that are keeping you poor. So let's start. Number 1. Bad Spending Habits Well, this a lot of us would be guilty of. Overspending on food, travel, and relaxation, and with the rise of online shopping, buying the things we want is just a click away. Impulse buying is one of the biggest reasons why we have a bad habit of spending too much. We see something we like, even though we don't need it, we click and add to cart. And with the rise of social media today, wherein we post our daily lives, share stories every time we eat or go to a fancy place, a lot of people want to look rich on the outside instead of focusing on what's inside your bank accounts. They always want to be in the A trend, buying expensive gadgets, clothes, and cars to look cool and impress other people. Worst part of it, some even spend beyond their means, beyond what they earn, credit after credit, just to look good to other people. If you really want to get rich in time, don't just focus on what's on the outside. Some millionaires, you won't even notice that they are millionaires. They just look normal because they don't focus on outer appearance, but focus on their savings, investments, and businesses, or their next idea to generate more cash flow. So if you have a bad habit of overspending, then track your spending. There's a lot of free apps today to track it. Every dime that comes out your pocket, you list it, so that at the end of the day, you'll be aware of how much you are spending. This way you get to eliminate those unnecessary expenses. Second, not saving and investing early. Einstein once quoted that the 8th wonder of the world is compounding. With investing, you get to tap in this power. Even if you aren't a spender, if you just let your money stay stagnant, then it would really take you a long time to reach your financial goals or may even be impossible to do so. A lot of poor people often realize this late in their lives. If they just invested their money and just even earned the average returns of the market, they would already be rich by now. If only they started early. Most of us waste our 20s partying and spending their hard-earned money and set aside investing. But actually, those are the times that you should be maximizing investments since you only have yourself to think of. You still don't have a family to feed. I know it's easy to get carried away by the various pleasures money can buy, especially during your early years of working. But always remember to set aside a certain amount that you can invest. The book The Richest Man in Babylon often stated, A part of all you earn is yours to keep that you should pay yourself first before paying everyone else. With this principle alone, combined with making your money work for you, will improve your financial life a lot. Some of us even make the mistake of investing only when they reach a certain amount of salary. They think that it's too early to start investing. This wastes those years where compounding interest should have already been working. So no matter how much you earn, set aside some money to invest with. Start small at first, like 10% of your salary. Then as you get a little bit more confident and got the hang of investing, then you can increase and increase it as the years goes by. This way your money is already working for you at an early period. Now before we go into the next one, if you're liking this video so far and still haven't clicked the like button, I would really appreciate it if you do so right now. Moving on. Third, poor people are afraid to take risk. They always want to be secured. A lot of poor people often stray away from investing, establishing a business, since they are afraid to lose their hard-earned money. So they only set aside their money in banks, which gives you little to no interest. Some only want to concentrate on their daily jobs, since this is a sure way to earn money. Always working for money. Rich people don't just concentrate on one source of income, and although there are risks involved in where they put their money, they know how to balance profit and risk. They know how to make their money work for them. Poor people, on the other hand, are full of what-ifs in their later lives thinking if only I did this, if only I invested earlier or started out this business early. Now a lot of us feel afraid to use our money to invest or to establish a business because we lack knowledge and understanding of it. We just believe the words of the people who lost a lot of money venturing into these kinds of activities without knowing the details of it. So in order for you not to feel this way, 
make the proper preparation. Study first what you are going into. Study successful people in that field that you want to try, instead of relying on what your family or friends say to you. Go through books or watch the right videos on YouTube. Start with the basics first. This way you will be mentally prepared on what you are venturing into. Fourth, you always play the blame game. Poor people often blame their current situation and as to why they aren't rich, that they weren't born to a wealthy family, their environment isn't great, they blame the government for being corrupt. Some even get angry at the rich, saying they are taking all the money, that's why they are poor. Always blaming other people first, instead of blaming themselves. So instead of blaming, why not focus on what you can do in order to get out of your current situation? Focus on what you can control. Just imagine a lot of millionaires and billionaires wasn't even rich to begin with. They started from scratch. They started on the same footing as you. Do you think they blame their surroundings? No, they focus on getting out of that situation. That the only one that can change their lives is themselves. To act instead of wasting their energy on blaming other people. Some often blame because they are just too lazy to do it themselves. They don't want to accept the responsibility of their financial status or situation. That they need to blame someone for their shortcoming. Just for them to feel good. So that they can remain in their comfort zone. You won't reach anything with this kind of attitude, so be honest with yourself and be ready to make changes. Remember, instead of wasting your time in blaming, why not just do something about it and find opportunities despite your current situation? Fifth, not improving oneself. A lot of us think that the education that we got from school is already enough. After graduating, we are free from the hardships of studying. But let's be real, most of the things we learned in school aren't even applicable to our daily lives more so our financial life. Jim Rohn coded, Formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. The educational system in our school doesn't even teach us how to handle our money properly and how to invest it. A lot of the things we need to become successful wasn't even thought to us. So even after we graduate, we always try to improve ourselves. Not only will this help out in our financial journey, but also on our mental well-being. As you see yourself gaining more knowledge, this gives you that sense of fulfillment that you achieve something new. And the more knowledge you have, the more you can converse well with other people. This can also help in gaining more opportunities. Although studying can be boring at first, but you can do it one small step each day. You can start first by reading a book for 10 to 20 minutes a day. Darren Hardy, the author of The Compound Effect, stated, Every great act, every fantastic adventure starts with the small steps. The first step always looks harder than it actually is. The start will always be the hardest, but you know even though you're only reading 10 to 20 minutes at first, just imagine doing that every day. The knowledge you get will compound and compound. Another statement Darren Hardy said, the magic is doing the simple things repeatedly and long enough to ignite the miracle of the compound effect. And once you had the habit of reading every day, I doubt you would only do it for 10 to 20 minutes. Eventually you would do it longer. So today, I want you to put this in your daily schedule. Set an alarm for self-improvement. At first, you would get lazy, so start off small, like before going to bed you have to read for 10 minutes, then every month as you gain the habit of reading, increase it, or have a target of one book per week. Start using compounding as well in your journey to gain more knowledge. Remember, self-education will make you a fortune. Sixth, Surrounding yourself with negative people. Have you ever heard, the rich only hang out with other rich people? Well, this is often true. Because most poor people often want to talk about entertainment, showbiz, and most stray away from talking about improvement, especially topics about money. Their conversation often revolves around nonsense things that won't even be helpful in your daily lives. If you talk about improvement and money with them, they will see you as somewhat boasting and criticizing them. So surrounding yourself with negative people like this won't do you any good. Often, these kinds of mindset may even influence you. Instead, surround yourself with friends and people that will lift you up. Surround yourself with people who are striving to achieve something great, those who will empower you and push you to be better, those who will raise your standards to a higher level, and those who will make you believe in yourself that you can achieve greatness. Surround yourself with individuals who want more from life, whom works hard towards making the world a better place, those whom you can learn from, and those who are driven to succeed. Lastly, you don't have a clear goal and plan in mind. No matter how knowledgeable you are, if you don't have a clear path as to where you are going to use that knowledge from, then it will all be useless. Like Tony Robbins once said, Knowledge is not power, but is potential power. Most of us aren't able to start in the first place because they haven't yet set aside a goal. They don't know what they will be doing in life. And some yes, have a goal, but don't have a plan to reach that goal. They don't have a sense of direction as to where to start. 
That's why in this last reason, we combine goal and a plan. Most people often skip this part, but this is one of the most crucial steps in starting your financial journey. Setting one can focus your attention and doing so can help us see the progress of what we are doing clearly. And this also helps us to get that sense of fulfillment every time we accomplish one. This gives us that boost of inspiration and momentum to reach new heights. But again, always be careful with the goals you set. Always set a goal that can push yourself to achieve more and of course, something that is also possible for you to reach. Some put a very high standard for their goals just to end up getting degraded at the year's end. That's why you also need a plan to reach it. If your goal is something that you will only be able to achieve in a long period of time, try to divide it. For example, your goal is to gain financial freedom or financial abundance. So for this year, your goal is to save and invest this amount of money. And the next year, try to increase it further. This way you get that sense of accomplishment every year when you achieve your goals. And this helps you improve yourself along the way as well. Instead of exhausting yourself to reach that one high standard goal you dream of. Because some people with a big goal tend to exhaust themselves because it's taking them too long. With this, they tend to give up midway. That's why if you think your goal is too big for you as of now, try to divide it. Set a goal each year that is possible for you to achieve. Remember, each of your goals should have a proper plan for you to reach it. With that, this ends our topic for today. So if you are guilty of doing these things, try to improve it one step at a time. It is never too late for you to improve yourself. Again, if you learned something from this video and still haven't clicked the like button, then I would really appreciate it if you do so before leaving. Thank you and see you in the next video.